Cyclone Bippo Joy stalls off the coast of India on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 14th. So Bipo Joy is still the main feature across the tropics right now and it's been a little while since our last tropical weather bulletin but we are code red for this storm which is posing a significant threat to the coast of Gujarat and also for the southern part of Pakistan. Uh, it could still make landfall as a powerful storm and has a major rain threat attached to it as well. Well, we can't see much in the Atlantic right now because there's a slight imagery outage there, but I can tell you that the Atlantic remains fairly quiet right now on day 14 of hurricane season. And in the Eastern Pacific, there's not much more we can see here either, but it's day 31 of hurricane season here, and we do have one area of interest which isn't actually marked on this map, but it's the same one that the National Hurricane Center has to the south of Mexico, 20% chance of development in the next seven days. In the Western Pacific, the remnants of Gucho, right on the top right corner of the screen there, moving well away from Japan and into the far North Pacific Ocean. And then of course the main feature tonight, which is Cyclone Bipo Joy, which is still off the coast of India, now moving very slowly indeed, in a slight north northwesterly direction at about 3 or 4 miles per hour. Clearly located in the Arabian Sea, getting closer to land bit by bit, it will make landfall in the next 48 hours we're expecting. So satellite imagery of the last 24 hours looks like this. You can quite clearly see Bipo Joy's uh, signature there and very high rain rates already occurring underneath that storm right now. And sure enough, we could see near 50 inches of rainfall over the water there. But over land, the rainfall will be less, but still very significant. We'll get on to that in a moment. But here's the latest... Uh, more rapid imagery here from the Indian satellite right now and interestingly a lot of the convection is still remaining offshore it's the southern side that's always been the most powerful certainly in terms of rain rate and it's the north and northeastern sides that's been buffeted by uh, wind shear very often and it is succumbed to that again in the last few hours after looking really good during daylight hours yesterday uh, but right now there it is uh, really the northern side getting ripped apart a little bit there uh, and it is struggling and it's been downgraded to a category 1 90 miles per hour from a 105 mile per hour category 2 peak yesterday still it could build back in and indeed some models suggesting that it, some strengthening could occur before it reaches land sea surface temperatures are good enough and conditions could be there certainly though a lot of energy on that south side as we look at this infrared imagery here uh, but very slow movement towards the north northwest and land impacts are steadily increasing with those winds getting up Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are very warm right now where that system might form soon around 31 to 32 degrees Celsius very warm indeed still quite cool well out to sea though the Atlantic is very warm and that's been noted uh, quite uh, profoundly in media these days uh, with this uh, warm anomaly but very warm sea surface temperatures all across the Gulf and through the Gulf Stream on the other, each side of Florida there. Very warm sea surface temperatures getting up close to 30 degrees Celsius. Western Pacific almost fully recovered after Typhoon Mawa the other week uh, and of course uh, Typhoon Guchol which just uh, stalled its recovery a little bit there in the central part of the ocean but temperatures really getting up once again 28 degrees very commonplace in the areas that matter. Arabian Sea, where Bipo Joy is right now, temperatures are around 30 degrees Celsius and they're warmest closest to the coast. So that's really why uh, the prognosis there for potential strengthening. Uh, Bay of Bengal also looking okay. Southwest Indian Ocean, as you can see, cooling down a lot now into the winter season there. Australian region, much the same. Only a few spots of 28 degrees Celsius waters in the Australian region. And in the South Pacific, it's retreating there as well. Uh, the southern islands of Fiji now only getting to about 26. 
Look at the ocean anomalies. The Atlantic, as you can see there, well above average, particularly further east along the coast of Africa. But looking towards the Pacific Ocean there, it's a bit hit and miss actually. Eastern Pacific is a bit above average in that warm spot, but below average still in the open ocean. And the El Nino effect continues to grow there along the equator and over South America off the coast of Peru. Uh, quite significant anomalies there now. Oceanic heat content in the Atlantic looks okay and it's uh, building up here as well. In fact, better than okay. It's pretty good, especially in the Caribbean and in the uh, Gulf Loop current. Eastern Pacific already looking decent there as well actually and in the Gulf of Tehuantepec also looking good there right now for any potential storms. Western Pacific also really getting up there now in large areas. So here's the GFS computer model. Uh, we're looking at two things here in the short range up to day five. First of all, that Eastern Pacific system, which we've marked as 20%, but also be on the lookout for a potential Atlantic system that GFS has been hinting at for a little while. Hasn't been designated as anything yet, so no real chance of formation, but you never know. Something might just happen with that, and GFS depicting a slight rotation on that system that moves into the coast of Honduras and Nicaragua. Uh, the formation of that Eastern Eastern Pacific storm results in a fairly weak storm in the end. Now this is Bipo Joy, which is a very slow movement towards the northeast there, depicted by the GFS, and holds steady at a probably category one status, and then moves inland. Curiously, uh, this particular uh, forecast run has the storm intensifying again a little bit after landfall, which I would say is very unlikely, uh, but it does hold on to itself pretty well as it moves on towards the northeast, and actually that forecast takes it further south than previous forecasts, probably south of New Delhi now, looking at that. And this is the rain expectations. Now, when it moves inland, that's based on the storm strengthening again a little bit, so I'm not so sure about that. But certainly near the landfall zone, we're still looking at very high amounts of rain on top of what we've already seen so far, probably only small amounts to date. But near the landfall area in uh, the Gujarat area of India, the northern part, uh, we're looking at potentially 19 or 20 inches of rain, which is 500 millimeters, a lot of rainfall there. Uh, interestingly, around Karachi, we were looking at 3 inches earlier on in a previous update, now only expecting 0.5, which is barely 20 millimeters. So Karachi looks like they're going to get away from this storm now, with the wind impact probably not going to reach there either. It's areas south of there, around the India-Pakistan border, uh, but a little bit south of that will be the worst area. Longer range looking towards these areas again, Eastern Pacific, that second little system uh, behind that first one that we're looking at. Uh, GFS almost spins that up into something. And then another little thing in the Atlantic there that moves through Cuba and then on through the, uh, well, Miami basically in southeastern Florida moving northwards. Interesting early season development that would be and uh, certainly in line with what you would normally see a storm track would look like in the early season. Interesting, a little bit further east than we might expect, but curious. Western Pacific also might uh, stir into more life in the Philippine region. Uh, a very broad system there being depicted around the 21st, 22nd of June. Continues northwestward and the second system possibly forming behind it near Guam there on that forecast. So certainly a busy period could be on the way. Uh, although no real intense storms it would appear, uh, but quite a few smaller, weaker storms forming everywhere. Well, that's all the serious stuff done with. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store and our usual items are there available for your per usual, uh, including our full season individual storm animations on request. We're also, by the way, still waiting for Hone, and you can wear a t-shirt that represents that. In the Silly Range, that Atlantic system actually does continue and gets quite strong. There it is, moving off the coast of Florida, shoots off past the Outer Banks and then strengthens to become possibly a tropical hurricane. Not sure whether it's turning post-tropical by that point. And then goes on to affect Atlantic Canada, moving through Nova Scotia and then on to Newfoundland. So that's a potential system there that looks interesting, but it is very long range, uh, but certainly something that could happen uh, not out of the realms of climatological possibility. There it is, long gone by the time it's past Newfoundland. 
Western Pacific, continuation of that very broad cyclone that really uh, blows itself out as it passes close to Taiwan, possibly continuing there. And then that other system in the Philippine Sea down to, towards a lower latitude as well doesn't have much of a life either, so neither of those reach typhoon status, which is interesting. Um, but June, you know, usually June storms are relatively weak, uh, and despite having not the least storms out of any month in the year, it does have statistically the least Tico score. Uh, you can talk about all of that though on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat around the world. On this day, quite historic, June 14th, 1991, uh, Typhoon Yunya was peaking just before striking the Philippines and there's a picture of that very compact uh, tropical cyclone with a decent looking eye. But what happened next, the following day, as the storm was weakening over southern Luzon, Mount Pinatubo erupted, uh, and that, well, the rest is history. An enormous volcanic eruption, one of the two largest of the 20th century, which caused extreme um, difficult conditions, hazardous conditions, and a lot of deaths, I'm afraid, from that storm, which occurred in 1991. Back to today then, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Brett in the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian the first name, and in the Central Pacific we are indeed still waiting for Hone. 23 storms so far this year, 92 is the average. In the Western Pacific, next name is Talim, and in the North Indian Ocean we are still looking out for Tej. A lot of people thought that that storm was named, but 3B didn't get a name when it was in the Bay of Bengal a few days ago so we're still waiting for it. In the Australian region, next name is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Gizani, and the South Pacific, Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.